know, uh, I've been, uh, this week, uh, it's been kind of a busy week for me at work and everything. And whenever uh, I've been working or whatever, I've had this one song go through my mind all week long. This one song over and over and over. It's, it's that song of, I can't even remember the name of the group that sings it now. It's right off the top of my head. Uh, that song, uh, Step Into the Water. That song's been uh, going through cathedrals. my head. The cathedrals. Yeah, they sing it. That song has been going through my head all week long. And last night I, I, I had a topic set up that I was, I was I'd been studying and was going to do. And that song, it just kept going through my mind and going through my mind and going through my mind all week. And so uh, I got to reading in the book of Matthew. And we're going to go to chapter 14. Right, God. And I'm going to start with verse 22. It says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit that they cried out with fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water, to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O they of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come unto the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. A truth. You know, when we think about Peter walking on the water with Jesus, we usually think about what could have happened if Peter didn't take his eyes off Jesus. You know, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But when he began to put his focus on the big waves and the sea storm, that was making while he was walking on the water, he became afraid. And because he became afraid, he began to sink in the water instead of walking on the water. And when Peter began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and pulled out Peter out of the water and said, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus is the Savior. You know, as long as Peter had faith and kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But when he saw how big the waves were getting while walking on the water to Jesus, he became afraid. And when he became afraid, he began to doubt. And when he began to doubt, he began to sink. But thank God that Jesus was right there to save him. Peter was sinking and drowning in the Sea of Galilee. And there's a lesson to be learned right there. And the lesson is, is that no matter how deep you may have sunk into your problems, Jesus is able to rescue you out of your problems. And all you got to do is do what Peter did. Save Cry me. out save to Jesus. Say, Lord, save me. save me. You know, many times in our walk with Christ, we are strong and we keep our eyes on Jesus. But things begin to happen around us. Storms begin to brew, waves begin to crash, and we begin to look at the waves around us or the problems that have come our way. We begin to look at these problems instead of keeping our eyes on Jesus. We take our eyes off of Jesus and then we begin to sink, just like Peter did. You know, when we come to Christ and, and, and when we have our eyes on Him, you better believe that things are going to come your way. 
There's things that's going to happen for whatever reason that they have here. But, but we have to remain focused on Him. We have to remain focused on Him. You know, Peter, he was smart enough to cry out to Jesus for help, and Jesus stretched out his hand and helped, just like he does with us when we need him. But, you know, when, when we hear this story, and all the, the years that I've been in church, when I hear this story, you always hear this, this part about Peter. This part about Peter, about when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. And that's the lesson that most people teach with this. And it's a very, very good lesson. But I begin to think about it. What, at, at least Peter stepped off the ship. There were 11 others on that ship, and Peter was the only one that stepped out. <coughs> You know, what, what about this? What about the other 11 that didn't have enough faith to begin with to step out? And Peter did. At least he took, took the step of faith in Jesus and got out of the boat. Even though he may have failed while walking on the water with Jesus because he, he, he took tried. his eyes off of Jesus. He tried. But yet we still need to give Peter some credit for the fact that he did get out of the boat. And he took a chance. At least he took the step of faith and got out of the boat. Now notice this. Notice that Peter got out of the boat to walk to Jesus on the water on some adverse conditions. You know, these conditions of, of the water, they were, they were pretty... We know by the scripture it tells us that, that the wind had ceased when Jesus told it to. So that lets us believed that, you know, the wind was blowing. The there were waves crashing. The wind was blowing. It's First of all, when Peter got out of the boat, it was during a sea storm. Matthew 14 and 24 tells us that the ship that or the boat that Peter was on in the middle of the sea storm. Secondly, when Peter got out of the boat, it was dark. And Matthew 14 and 25, it says that at the fourth watch of the night, this is, it was sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. It was stormy and dark, but yet Peter still got out of the boat. And the reason why Peter got out of the boat, even though it was stormy and dark, was because Peter had faith in Jesus. Peter believed that if Jesus is right there with him in the dark, and right there with him in the midst of the sea storm, Jesus was going to be able to help him. Because that Peter did get out of the boat, he received a blessing of being the only mortal man to ever walk upon the water. There's another lesson to be learned, and the lesson is no matter how adverse your situation may be, Jesus will be there with you to help you out. You may be in a situation that is dark and you can't see your way out, but don't fear, for Jesus will be right there to guide you through it. You may be going through some storms in your life, but don't fear, for Jesus can help you out through the storm, no matter what you are going through. You are not in it alone, for Jesus is standing right there by your side to help you out. And, and this is the thing that we forget so many times that when all these things begin to rise up against us, we, we forget that Jesus is right there. The creator of the world. He's, always, he's right there with us. He's always right there with us to help us through everything that we're going through. All we have to do is call out to him. He's right there. But you know, we have to have that faith to get out of the boat. We have to have that faith to step out onto the water. We gotta have that faith enough to know that, that he's gonna be right there with us. You know, Peter he was able to walk on the water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, but when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. But yet the one fact that still remains, at least he did get out of the boat. 
So the question is, how come the other 11 disciples did not get out of the boat? And this is something that, that I couldn't find was ever explained as to why they didn't get out of the boat or anything like that. But we, we can only come up with ideas in our own mind of why we think that they didn't get out of the boat. One of the first reasons why I would think that they wouldn't get out of the boat is because they were afraid. Just like all of us would be. They were afraid. They were in, in a boat. Human beings. The wind was blowing. The waves were crashing. It was dark. Human factor. Even though Jesus assured them that he was not a ghost. You know, at first they thought it was a spirit walking across the water. He read their minds. They were still afraid. And also add to the fact that it was dark and they were in the midst of a sea storm caused the other 11 disciples to be fearful and to not step out on the boat, out of the boat. The second reason why the other 11 disciples may not have got out of the boat was because they had doubts. Even though Jesus assured them that he was still, that he was not a ghost walking towards their ship on the water, they still had some doubts in their minds. Doubts and fears. The third reason could be that they did that they did not get out of the boat could be that they felt safe in the boat. Even though Jesus was outside of the boat walking on the water, the other eleven did not get out of the boat because they were afraid. They had doubts and they felt safe in the boat. Now how many times do we go through our life and we don't do things because we feel safe where we're at? Because we feel safe right where we're at. Because we feel comfortable right where we're at. That we, we, we don't take the chance. That we're too afraid to step out of our comfort zones. To go out and do what we need to do. To go out and do what God asks us to do. I mean Jesus he was walking across that water and he said come. He's talking to the people on the boat. He says come. Come out here. Come right out here with me. And only one jumped out of the boat. <laughs> the other ones might have felt safe where they were at. They were comfortable where they were at. They were afraid to get out in the storm. They, they, they didn't take that first step of faith that Peter did. And sometimes that's all it takes is that first step of faith. That first step Go for it. Is, the first, is, is, is the thing that gets us through. Because when he, when he jumped out of that boat, and he landed on top of the water instead of landing in the water. It gave him a renewed sense of confidence. You know, you could only imagine how you would feel if you jumped out of the boat and, and landed on, almost like landing on a rock, standing right there on top of the water, looking around, wondering, you know, how is this even possible? So it gave him a, a renewed sense of confidence in himself, but not only in himself for what he was able, for the faith that he was able to muster up to do this, but also a stronger faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what we have to do in life. We have to get out of our comfort zones and begin to, begin to move forward. We have, we have to take that first step of faith. And once you take that first step, then everything else begins to come in. It begins to pour in. All the, you, you begin to gain your strength. You got to have a start. You begin to gain strength through God. You begin to realize that you're not doing this on your own. No. You begin to realize that that God is right there and that He's not going to leave us. He's right here with us. And let's do something for God. And whenever, you know, when He began to walk across there and He began to pay attention to the things that are around Him and He began to sink, the first thing He did, <clears throat> because He knew that Jesus Christ could help Him, He cried out to Him. Even though he began to have doubts, he began to pay attention to the things that were going on around him rather than paying attention to Jesus. He knew that even in those times that he could call on him and Jesus stretched forth his hand and, and grabbed him. And this is what we have to remember. But one of the things that really, really got to me was, was that first step. We have to take that first step. This is the thing that most people have the most trouble with, is that first step. And they, 
It's like they, they, they want to take that step. They want to. They have it said in their mind that they want to take this step. But so many people, they stay in the boat. Don't get down to fears. So many people, that they, they have trouble taking that first step. They, they stay in the boat. And that's what we've got to get past. We've got to get out of the boat and step into the water. We have to get out into the water where Jesus is. And as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we're not going to sink. We're not going to sink. And so many times I hear people, they talk about, uh, you know, uh, about all the things that they come up against. All the things that are coming up against them. You know, I, I have this happen and this happen and this happen. You know what? Sometimes we get thrown curveballs. Sometimes we have obstacles that get in our way. But we have to remember that even if we look away for just a second and begin to sink, all we have to do is cry out to Him. All we have to do is cry out to Him. We still have a and the pain. Brother Jerry, he had been telling too many jokes. And I'm going to end this with a, a small joke. And it's a, I don't want to offend anybody by no means. But there were, there were three preachers in a boat and they were fishing. There was a, a, Baptist, a, a Baptist, a Pentecostal, and a Catholic. They was all out in the boat and they were fishing. Well, on the shoreline, the Baptist, his wife came to the shore. She said, hey, you got a telephone call. She hollered out across there, you got a telephone call. So he jumps up out of the boat, he runs across the water, goes over there, answers the phone call, runs back, hops in the boat. The Pentecostal, his wife comes out. He says, hey, you got a phone call. So he jumps out of the boat, runs across the water, answers the phone call, runs back across the water, gets back in the boat. So the Catholic's wife comes out. She says, hey, you got a phone call. Well, he jumps out of the boat and sinks straight to the bottom. The Pentecostal looks at the Baptist. He says, you think we should have told him where those stones were? <laughs> I'm going to turn the service back over to Brother Jerry.